Hey, welcome to Fireside Tats. My name is Jake. I run this show. Wait, was he, were you not ready? Yeah, you're good. <laughs> uh, what was I saying? I'm Jake. I'm your host. I don't know what episode this is. It's got to be in the two to 500 range. And uh, my co-host is, uh, is absent tonight, but I have a, an even better guest. This is, uh, it's funny. K, this is KP. KP, and I, I don't know your last name. Payne. Payne. KP yeah. Payne. Um, I just call me KP, man. Okay. Like, the P is for pain. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, what's the K for? Don't worry about it. All right. <laughs> uh, so this is, uh, we tattoo in the same town. And we have for we have for several years now, and it's the first time we ever met. Yeah, I've, I've actually, I've never been inside of Underground. Like, I've always Really? Been, yeah. Like, huh. And it's it's Strange. intimidating, man. It took forever to walk into No Regrets, too. Yeah. 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 Well, it's like, hey, you know, you guys exist in Legend. You were there before me. Oh, I, yeah. That was like, um, yeah, I, I, I remember just, there weren't, when I first started in Memphis, there weren't any real shops that stood out to me that much. Underground was there. It was... Um, uh, it was newer though, and yeah. everyone was really young. And I knew they were custom tattooers, but I'd never seen anything that blew me away at that point. It was real early, but I, there were a handful of actual tattooers that spread around the city that yeah. I remember being like, I didn't want to talk to. Just, yeah, like I've never met Kevin Johnson. I've always wanted to. I've always wanted to get. I've tattooed never met Kevin him. either. That's terrifying, man. Huh. That he's, guy's he's, crazy good. And yeah, I just want to really like good. make a fool of myself in front yeah. of him. Yeah, you know? we've talked about their shop a little bit on the show, um, but uh, I've been there. Uh, yeah, have you? I've never met him. Uh, yeah, I can tell. I can tell. This shows how how um, how uh, professional our show is. We talk to people off camera that no one else can hear. So it's, so then people listening <laughs> on the radio are just like, ah, what? No yeah. one's saying anything. Um, so, anyways, we never met, uh, but today looked like a good opportunity, especially with David not here, getting in the way. So we'll uh, we're going to talk a little bit about KP and uh, kind of his. Background: um, You tattoo at No Regrets. I do. Tattoo Emporium, which I like that name. Uh, <laughs> it's a good one. Yeah, it's a good and, one. Uh, uh, which is really maybe ten minutes from our shop. Yeah, uh, right around the corner. And we know a lot of the same people uh, because a handful of the people at No Regrets actually tattooed it at Underground Art at yeah. our shop. Um, so, how long have you been tattooing now? Uh, actually tattooing, I guess, like, almost eight years. It'll be eight years, like, this coming February, so seven and a half, something like that. Okay. Yeah. And you started in Memphis? Uh, yeah, I, um, the first shop I ever worked at was, uh, did you ever hear of Fat City? No. Oh, where yeah, was that? Down on Shelby Drive, right? You know where the Nike uh, factory is down there? Yeah, yeah. There's a little strip mall that used to be across the street. Huh. And, uh, apparently, like, before I started working there, apparently it was a, you know, a banging joint, but uh, they had pool hmm. tables and arcade machines and everything. By the time I got there, it was a, a gutted mess. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I started work there for six months before it got closed down. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Does anyone else from that shop still tattoo uh, yeah, around? Uh, yeah, uh, Dustin Shield. Yeah, uh, owns okay, Studio 42. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's who I started out with and everything. So. Okay. Um, so then, so from there, that explains how you ended up at Studio 42 in oh. Memphis. Well, it was, a, it was a little bit longer road than that. Um, so the guy that owned Fat City also owns a bunch of tattoo shops around Memphis and in uh, uh, northern Mississippi and South Haven and everything like that. And, uh, What's so, their name? Uh, Carl Boschers. He owns uh, Illusion Inc. And, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so he closed that shop down. We opened up the shop on Highland called The Tattoo Spot. It's still there today. It's owned by Mike Luster. And everything. Yeah. yeah. It's a good dude. Uh, and that was right down the street from Trilogy. And up to that point, I'd seen the tattoos that we had, you know, done in the shops that I worked at. You know, fine, you know, local tattoo and everything like that. But I'd never seen, like, crazy, over-the-top, you know, new school and progressive type approaches to tattooing until I walked into Trilogy. And yeah. the first thing I opened up was Ben Reese's portfolio and blew my socks off. You yeah. Know, like, I'd never seen anything like that. Still don't. That guy's crazy. He's good. Yeah. And uh, so I worked there for about, I guess, a year and a half of Opened the shop and then I got fired because uh, I was a counter help and I was really bad at it. Like yeah, everybody is. You know? <laughs> Why does every tattooer have to t pretend like they can work the counter? I don't hey, get you that. know, I can work the counter. You <laughs> put me in the counter now, I will sell a fucking tattoo, <laughs> guaranteed. Yeah. But back then, I was a shithead, nineteen year old. You know, didn't, yeah. didn't have yeah. any you know, notions I, how things worked. I got stuck with that counter job too, and uh, and even now, like I, I've, I've not worked the counter in years. But even now, if I'm out sitting at the counter, um, talking to someone behind the desk, if a customer walks in, I just look at my phone and walk away <laughs> I can't for whatever reason I just don't listen to it I, I don't have no idea why I'd be, I'd be terrible doing that I don't I mean I've, I just never had a problem with that like 
I, I think it helps, you know, the, it helps the entire situation if you make the person comfortable. And the only yeah. way to make them comfortable is to talk to them. Even if I don't end up doing the tattoo, you know, if I can facilitate somehow, I like to do that. Yeah. And I guess, you know, that's kind of comes from owning my own shop, you know. You, yeah. you want people to walk in and walk out after buying something. So yeah. it always helps. And, it, and it definitely, whether you're, you know, if you own a shop, absolutely. But um, it's probably really valuable for for a tattooer early on in their career just to get used to talking to, yeah. to the client anyways. It'll help them doing consultations down the road. And it's going to be, you know, you're going to be in a much more intimate situation with them if you talk them into getting a tattoo. So you get, if you can't right. talk to them with a the counter in between, you, you know, you got you to gotta get past that. Yeah, yeah. So you saw Ben's work at, um, mm -hmm. at Trilogy. Well, I mean, and, and Joe, uh, Joe Stamp and Tony Max were both there, too. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if Paul was over at Underground at that point. I think I he was. Probably was I think at he that was. Point, yeah. uh, but I had seen this fucking this kangaroo that he had done on a friend of mine's arm. It's still amazing to this day. Yeah. No color has ever fallen out of it. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. And like I said, you know, I saw those guys work and it blew my fucking mind. You know, I tried while I was working at the tattoo spot. I was walking down every other week and trying to get an apprenticeship at Trilogy. Yeah. So, yeah. so did that work? No. Oh. No. <laughs> they never uh, the week before we opened 42 you know which was going to be like my shop uh, yeah. to start out in and uh, Babak gave me a call and was like hey you, uh, you're going to be an apprentice I was like nah, nah. nah, nah. <laughs> oh, great time <laughs> yeah well um, so you started Studio 42 mm -hmm. with Dustin a, okay just yeah. the two of you uh, well I mean there was a third person involved but uh, it's you okay. know it, water gotcha. under the bridge okay um <clears throat> Yeah, and, and uh, we did that for how, so you went really God, straight from that. you weren't well. How far out of an apprenticeship were you? How long oh, had I you was been apprenticing when we opened that place? You were still apprenticing okay. when you opened. At this point, I had worked in like four or five different shops, and all I had done is drawn for everybody. Like if someone sure. wanted to come in and get something, you know, custom drawn, it was me yeah. that did it. Uh, or uh, when I was Started in South the Haven, there was Goat Two, Goat and Tupelo. Uh, but I mean, you know, like. I've always been able to draw pretty okay, so you know, my stuff kind of stood out and it got to where people were asking you know, for me to design their tattoos, and right. I still wasn't allowed to tattoo, and that just kept going on and on and on. How, how did you feel about the finished tattoos of your drawings? On well, I mean, at, at that point I had, you know, maybe two hours of machine time, you know, on my cell phone or my belt, so I had no notion of how to finish a tattoo. Or no, I mean, out. other people finishing your tattoos. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I, like, oh, okay. so from what I saw, the they, yeah, they were doing, you. yeah, they were doing okay. the peak of what they could do. Okay. You know, I, I would have approached it differently, but I couldn't fault them because I didn't know how to do what the fuck they were doing. You know? Right. Right. Uh, I, I was in that same boat. I started at a place years before that. I don't know if you ever heard of called Dragon Master. Yeah, I heard of Dragon Master. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I, that's where I first started. And, uh, and I got, I got stuck with the same job. Yeah. Drawing, uh, or it wasn't really even drawing so much. It was just changing flash a little bit more yeah. often than not. But still, I remember, and I was really kind of cranking through. Sometimes there were cust there were actual custom pieces. I had to talk to people, but um, uh, it, it was basically just cranking through a drawing, putting it on a board, and the next person that came available got that drawing. And yeah. I, I remember so often being like, God, that doesn't look anything like my drawing." Uh, just well, I mean, you know, there are a lot of those situations, but you, yeah. you do what you can. Yeah. You know, you, you always want to. I mean, I got paid. I was getting one hundred and twenty-five dollars a week, I think, at that point. Oh, working seven days a week, wow. ten hours a day, uh -huh. drawing constantly. You know, so I mean, you know, at least I got that. You know, I got pretty fucking fast. You know, yeah. so yeah. it was learned how to draw. You learned how to make your drawings more. Did you already draw in that in kind of a yeah. animated yeah. cartoon? You know, like kind I guess style? like. I was no, I was always huge into comic books, but like when I, uh, you know, I stopped reading them because uh, just moving around a lot uh, in between like eight and twelve, thirteen, and then in uh, freshman year of high school, I met some guys that were into comic books too. But it was like the new wave dudes, like uh, Joe Majera. I don't know if you ever heard of him. And uh, this was after Todd McFarlane had stopped doing Spawn, and now Greg Coppola was doing it, the, you know, all the way. Yeah. So it was, you know, it was that kind of anime influenced stuff. And I yeah. wasn't really into anime, but uh, the the way it was interpreted in, in Western comic books, I really liked, and I just okay. started building off that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just copy people. That's all I do. Yeah, yeah. You still just copy people. That's all I do. <laughs> Stuff I like, I just try to incorporate it where I can. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's I think that's really common. But what really what what it comes down to, I think, is you're not copying a person. You're copying. Uh, a collective and yeah. then you're making your own marks and you end up yeah, kind of translating you, know, that you have to absorb unique. everything and you know filter it through yourself and make it you know you make it your own right you know make it something that other people want to have yeah so how was that experience um, opening a shop 
as an owner, I'm, I'm guessing you'd never run any other type of business before no, no, that. Absolutely not. So no business um, background at all. No, I mean, I, I, I went to MCA for a semester and a half before yeah. I quit. And then I worked full time. I was a, uh, did an elect- electrical engineering job that I was not in any way qualified for. And uh, left that after about a year. I uh, worked in an office doing clerical stuff that I was in no way qualified to do. It was like paralegal shit, and I don't have an associate's degree. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, I was okay. on my way to an interview at FedEx Ground, and my car broke down uh, over on uh, 3rd Street. And I pulled into a gas station, made a phone call. My friend picked me up. Couldn't stay with him at his house, so he's like, I got a buddy you can crash with. He takes me over to this guy, Dustin's house, right? Okay. And I'd never met him before. I think maybe, maybe I might have encountered him before, but I don't think we ever really talked. Hmm. And uh, he had a sketchbook out, so I drew it. And uh, I woke up the next day, and he was screaming at the top of his lungs, who the fuck drew my sketchbook? <laughs> and I'm, this guy, you know, like, my dad was really heavily tattooed, kind of a biker, you know, back pieces yeah. and, short, and quarter sleeves and all that shit. But I'd never been around, like, a person with tattoos on their fucking throat. You know? yeah. So I'm terrified. You yeah. Know? <laughs> and... Uh, he, uh, you know, he keeps yelling about who drew in a sketchbook, and finally I said it was me. I drew in your sketchbook, you know, kick my ass, whatever, <laughs> yeah. just to shut him up. And uh, he said, "You want a job?" So worked oh. out of Fat City, started apprenticing. I was oh, nineteen, okay. you know, that's just how huh. it went. Yeah, it's funny. The funny. I didn't have to like. I didn't have to hoof around like a that. shop or anything, yeah. nothing like that. You know, yeah. I didn't try to sell myself. It was right there for the taking. Huh. So you guys started that shop. Um, how? Overall, how, how did it go? How did it start? How did it? Uh, well, like I said, we had both worked for that, uh, that guy, Carl. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I don't want to speak too disparagingly of him because, you know, he gave me a shot and everything like that. And I was a shitty kid and I didn't appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. But uh, he pulled up one day. Cause he, originally, 42, he owned it. Oh, like, okay. he put the money in and uh, we were just going to work in the shop. The deal was is that eventually we were going to save up enough money to buy, buy it. And he was like, y'all aren't going to make no fucking money for three years, you know, blah, 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 blah. And uh, so we turned a profit in six months, uh, right in the green six months. Because it's, it's out in Bartlett, you know, and there's, there's no, nothing out there. there's Alien Inc. and Cat Daddies, which, you know, neither of those have been, you know, great for a long time. Right. And yeah. Uh, like so, Andrew. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we were, you know, the injection of new blood out there. And that's, you know, where I grew up. So I knew all those fucking people. I could deal with that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, just immediate turnaround, you know, we're ready to go. And uh, that Christmas, he pulls up in the shop in a brand new Escalade. It is, uh, I, I'm, I think it was, it was like that cherry red color, you know, yeah. with the uh, pearlescent paint and everything, huge 20 inch rims on that shit. And uh, he said, look what y'all bought me. And uh, at that point, we we're just like, it's over, man. We're going to fucking, we're, this is ours. We're going to take it from you. And we did. You know, it was, uh, I think, eight months to a year later, it was ours. So you already, it, it was already in the contract that you had the right to do that. Yeah. So there was no way for him to keep Well, I mean, the you, contract is, sure. you know, very loose word. Yeah. 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 A couple of kids that have never owned a business signed a Absolutely. contract. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, there uh, was, there was no signing. It was, you know, no, this is was, what was agreed upon. We got lucky with circumstances. He needed money at a certain point. So okay. we were able to shoot our way in. Okay. So you had basically been running the show that entire time right? well i mean i was uh dustin was tattooing full time mm-hmm. and i was uh you know uh, at this point he had started to really come into his own started doing his own drawing and stuff like that and uh, i was just you know working on my stuff on the side as much as i can running the counter and then uh you know about five six months in we started getting really busy and he needed you know he needed me to finally step in so uh started doing tattoos and i remember like the second tattoo i ever worked on by myself this guy came in and he wanted this jail scene on his arm fixed up this yeah this red brick wall with dudes getting beat up some shit on the front of it that he'd gotten awesome. done in prison he wanted me to fix it and I don't think I fixed it. Yeah, but, you yeah. Know, most likely. Yeah. You did. And I think I charged him like I worked on him for like six hours and charged him a hundred dollars. <laughs> nice. just, just brutal. And yeah. uh, you know, and it's, that was it was off runner from there. Yeah, it's funny way like I can picture that just being completely terrified, um, still having no technical savvy whatsoever, uh, but kind of like you, I, I drew pretty well early on. Yeah. I, I drew all the way. There's my whole life I drew so. Um, 
you know, in a in a drawing circle, in a circle of real artists, I was probably well below average. But but in a ta- in tattooing in oh, the yeah. mid nineties, I was a badass yeah, as far as drawing up. went. Because I mean, I started. I think it was you know it was two thousand four, two thousand five. You know, so it was yeah. like right when like new school was just yeah, blowing shit up. Was taking so, off. Like, yeah, my shit was on point. Yeah, yeah. Well, I remember people coming in and wanting me to fix tattoos mm-hmm. and saying, "Oh, well, you draw well, you can probably fix." Well, you know, you know better now, obviously, than you did then. How much more work it is to fix a bad tattoo oh, is just yeah. do a tattoo and you're like oh I can definitely make it better and then you get into it and you go oh I'm just making this worse yeah it's just, <laughs> it's just now it's more better. noticeable right exactly <laughs> I managed to point out every shitty oh, thing look, in the I tattoo. made every fuck up more obvious <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah exactly um, so uh, uh, so you made the move you were at you were you were at uh, St- Studio 42 for five six years something like that okay yeah. and been at No Regrets for a, couple. a year and a half almost two yeah and uh, no regrets. So obviously, this show we're we're talking like everyone's from Memphis, and no one knows any of these things that we're talking about. But no regrets is a really, really solid shop in Memphis, and uh, I mean, there's just not a bad artist in the place. And they came from uh, several of them came from our shop. Several of them came from another shop uh, here in Memphis, and it's just uh, I don't know how long they've been open now. It's got to be like six uh, or they eight they years. Op- they have been open the same amount of time that 42 two has. Okay, so uh, about eight years, nine years, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Okay, and. Uh, yeah, and Paul. Yeah, you guys. If you if you watch regularly, you've seen Paul several times, and he is an owner of um, of No Regrets. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite dudes too, man. Yeah, he's a great guy. guy. He's a great guy. I miss working with him. Uh, so you, uh, so the new school style was just something that just you were into comics. You you adopted that style mm-hmm. because it really because it was just really in your face when you started. Yeah, tattooing. I mean, it's what was around. Well, uh, that, uh, the the kind of the guys that I was working with were like the very you know like. 80s biker flash you know like that was just because i'm north mississippi that's what people are after you know they want the the tribal and the uh you know the skulls that's what that's what they want which is fine you know do a rebel flag every now and then looking out of skin whatever yeah uh but i mean like you know just always that stuff grab because uh you know like i said i saw ben's stuff and you know like and then i started finding the influences that he had you know like a coop in san diego guru the superstition yeah uh kevin starai uh at that point um Tim B. Drum was just like starting to, oh, to yeah. gain a lot of steam. You know, that guy's incredible. My favorite tattooer, probably. Uh, yeah. yeah, like Ben has got a beautiful sleeve by him and everything. Yeah, I remember uh, watching that. He did that at our shop. Yeah. Uh, I remember watching that develop, Man. and that was yeah, it's so good. impressive. You know, and it's just it's it just grew out of all that. You know, like trying to incorporate you know like the way uh, B. Drum's. Uh, kinetic lines and the way he uses line to build up form and like very simple color going over that but very thought out you know right and <clears throat> trying to at the same time make my stuff different enough to where you know it stands out and people want it it's still a work in progress but yeah see how it goes. hopefully it always is yeah. i mean yeah you hope that the one thing that stood out to me about tim b drawn early on was that um was his palette uh he was really um he was really confident in very muted tones in order mm-hmm. to push his high key colors. Yeah. And he used that he used contrast in a way that I'd never seen it. I always thought of contrast as like dark and light or black against a bright color mm-hmm. or black against whatever. And he used contrast in uh with tones. Yeah. And he would really like milk things down and make them so muted and like weird green to even weirder blue to a funky purple thing. And then there'd be this red like creepy eye or something yeah that, with the hot pinks and the yellows yeah, around and everything that i just like that. couldn't wrap my brain around how he was pulling it off and i thought god this guy understands color so much better than i do but really what he understood was value and yeah. temperature a little bit he just was a he's he's just phenomenal but i mean like when when you're wanting to make you know i guess like new school has become the you know the archaic hated term for you know more illustrative yeah. tattooing yeah like you have to you know, you're almost selling things on a piece by piece basis, and you have to be able to, you know, to work those things out and make it to where people can understand it. And when, the way he does, like every, the way Bedron does things, everybody immediately understands his language. You know, it just comes through on the top. Right. And I think that's one of the most impressive things about guys like him and you know yeah. uh, Nick Baxter. You know, yeah. it's immediately recognizable as something different that appeals to a broad spectrum of people. Yeah. And that's the real thing to me. You know, yeah, that's the magic. You're right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. He was, uh, yeah, he's incredible. So yeah, he was, he was a big influence. 
influence. He came mm-hmm. in. Uh, obviously, he had been he's been tattooing a long time, so he yeah. was already really established, probably by that. Oh point. yeah, I mean, I, you know, I'm sure he had clientele back and back, but that's when he first started to get like the magazine note. Because you know, yeah. it seemed like every other week, you know, with MySpace and Facebook, that some crazy asshole out of the Midwest was blowing things up and doing thing completely yeah. everything completely different. You know, like you get your your Cody Ikes and. Uh, that mm-hmm. Noah dude up in Kansas City that just you know does the craziest roses you've ever seen. You know, yeah. it's it's cool, but I mean it's a double edged sword at the same time. So it goes both so? ways. Well, like the the more saturated it becomes, like the less value it has, and you know that's always troubling. You know, in an artistic standpoint and in just a practical standpoint. You know, it affects everything about the job. You know, the the less value that a tattoo has, the less people want them, and the less they're willing to pay for them to make it worthwhile to do the best work you absolutely can. And yeah. that's the problem I see with it. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that for sure. Uh, is um uh, as far as the, what you consider your your biggest influence, you mentioned Timmy B a little while ago. Mm-hmm. Who who are some of what would be the top two or three or four influence that you feel like you had coming up? Man, uh, you know, I've always, my entire career, it seems like I've, I've got the comparison to Ben Reese. And, you know, as yeah. undeserved deserved as I think that is, like, that's he's the guy. And, yeah, I mean, yeah. he's everything. And it's to this day, you know, being able to, like, you know, our stations are right next to each other, separated by a short hallway. He calls me, and, like, this guy knows what fucking colors he needs to use, but he calls me in to ask me what I think, you yeah, know? Yeah because he's you know, a dickhead. <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, it's things like that, you know, like, just the fact that he, you know, as coming up as a tattooer, he was my hero, and now I get to, to learn from him on a daily basis. Yeah. You know, he'll always be number one. And give input. That's yeah. pretty exciting. Uh, you know, the, the fact that he respects me enough to ask for that, yeah, yeah I really appreciate it. Yeah. Even though he is a dickhead for it. <laughs> um, well, you know, I mean, even if he does know, at the very least, he's, I mean, you're... You're you're getting to make decisions on on his piece, oh, and, yeah. and I'm sure he wouldn't ask if he didn't think. And sometimes some I'm right, man. It. Sometimes yeah. I'm right. Yeah. yeah so, I bet. That's uh, really cool. you know, like definitely Timmy. You know, he it almost, you know, he, he started out his shit. You know, right down the road from here. You know, He's in Nashville. He wasn't he? in Nashville, and yeah. uh, you know, just watching the way that guy hit the scene and the way you know, because now everybody wants to do what Timmy does. You know, oh, you yeah. can't do what Timmy does, man. Timmy does. You it. can't. Yeah. You can't. That guy. All those guys up at Night Owl are amazing. Uh, you know, Sam Fiorino is blowing up. He's amazing. He does. You know, I pride myself on my goofy animals, and he makes my goofy animals look terrible. So. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Lindsay Baker is. You know, she does this yeah. crazy painterly stuff. Yeah. You know, she's, she's incredible. She's, she's really good. Yeah. Um, yeah, t- uh, Timmy B. I, Kelly Doty. Kelly Doty is Kelly incredible. Doty. Um, the um, uh, where was I going? Oh, the uh, every, most of the time I draw. I try to I try to draw from photo or from photo reference or from life or whatever I, as much as I can. I rarely look at other tattooers, but every once in a while I'll flip through Instagram and I'll be stuck on a p- piece of a drawing and I'll without fail I'll run across something that Timmy B did and mm-hmm. I'll be like oh I love how that little flame thing whips I'm going to do that and then I start to incorporate it and I'm like that doesn't work with anything that I do that guy's got his own thing going on yeah, I can't even steal his stuff no, it's, uh, it, you it see people try to when it comes it. through as a cheap imitation you know because yeah. I mean if they're, if they're able to steal his stuff it's from like you know five years ago yeah. and it's not the same as it is now and no. you know he's quick too like you know he knocks out pieces you know huge Pretty fast. I've never met him. Has he? I I've met him a few times. Uh, I've worked at conventions where he's been at. Uh, he's a super nice. Actually, uh, I went and got tattooed by Ben when he guest spotted at uh, Black Thirteen when Timmy okay. still worked there. And yeah. He hung out and bullshitted with us for a few hours. So hmm. He's a cool guy. If yeah. I just come party at his house, we didn't take him up on it. But you should have. He seemed. Uh, he, he does seem like it. I only know him. You know, obviously through Instagram, but just he seems like a kind of a, a really laid back easy going guy he's always I mean, real yeah. outgoing every time I've ever talked to him like probably you know two or three times now he's been super nice to me and I appreciate that so yeah um, as far as uh, so you you had a kind of a bumpy road through in a through an apprenticeship uh, just because you bounced around some and then was and then had other responsibilities owning a shop or yeah. running a shop well, while trying to while be married and everything like that um, and you do and we're going to be uh, we probably have been putting up KP's work throughout this show and you'll notice the the style stylistically that uh the way that he draws it doesn't work if you can't put in really solid lines and really solid color that's the key to that to that new school kind of style uh and your blends have to be flawless so so you really had to master in order to pull that the style that you wanted to to work in off you had to master the technical side 
pretty uh it was it was a necessity absolutely yeah. so how, i mean i wouldn't uh, say it was a master trip by any stroke but all of your blends look i mean obviously we're, i'm looking at instagram you can't zoom that's the bad thing about instagram you can't zoom uh you can't zoom in but everything i see looks really clean and 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 the blends are clean the line weights look solid and they look like they taper nicely and all that stuff so uh what do you um where did you struggle the most oh uh, definitely coloring uh i've always I've, I've never i'm not a painter uh i i don't up to, up to the point where i started tattooing i never did finished artwork it was always sketches you know just drew sketches all the time because i wanted to, to break into comics and you know to draw comic book pages all you got to do is pencil them you know mm -hmm. and you send them off to somebody else and they hang them for you right. and it's different nowadays when i was a kid that's what it was you know um <clears throat> so i just never put any thought or focus into that side of things and you know like i had a weird childhood and i couldn't devote time to art like you know a lot of people had opportunities to and didn't have a lot of money so not access to you know all the supplies and anything so i just had to make do where i could uh <clears throat> but you know like tattooing is the first thing where i really started to be able to express myself you know through art and that's you know was it because you were forced to finish pieces? oh yeah absolutely you know you got some you know surly guy who's been sitting in the chair for two hours you better get done you yeah know? that's one thing i don't know if you ever read nick baxter's book his oil painting book mm -hmm. a realist something to oil it, it's really really good uh but that's one thing that he pushes is no matter what you're working on uh get it to a finished point uh, and he makes he's really articulate obviously and he uh he, he writes a several paragraphs about it but he really hammers home the idea of how important it is for you to see pieces finished and how really detrimental it is uh, to have tons of unfinished pieces kind of ha looming yeah around absolutely you. but i mean like you know it's not always your fault you know like you, you're gonna get those people like hey man i want to sleep yeah and you yeah. start and to sleep absolutely yeah, you start I think he's talking in painting and, and drawing painting. in general yeah but. but like you know like i said i wasn't painting at this point right. so you know like the only thing i had to go on was people i'd see like every four or five months like hey man let me get an hour on my sleeve you know, yeah this doesn't work you know and like i started like really making a push to do like just these single big splash like get them done in six hours hours pieces and mm -hmm. you know a lot of them I gave away for free just to do them and that's what I've been trying to you is know. that how you're um, are you doing what trying to do one big tattoo a day and call it uh, well no I, I mean I still work uh, session wise and everything okay. um, uh, but you know if I could do a big one in a day and just get it done I'd be happy yeah you know? seems ideal to me too yeah you know just work for five or six hours on one thing and make it really awesome you know mm -hmm. instead of like you know skipping around on a sleeve and coloring here and there you know, yeah it's way more fun and it becomes you know <clears throat> like you were saying, like the stuff I'm, I'm trying to, you know, I try to make things look like they're coming in and I focus on a tattoo, you know, like, uh, you know, tail feathers would be pushed back and just be a solid wall of color, you know, so you just look in the background or anything like that. And it makes the tattoo, in my eyes, look momentary, you know, like you're, you're capturing a you know, particular thing. Yeah. And when you get it done in one shot, it makes it an um, even bigger moment, you know, because now they have this, you know, this tattoo that looks like it's in motion that they got done in one sitting and it was an entire experience, you know, where some fat guy was talking shit to him for six hours and hurting right. their feelings, you know? Yeah. And, you know, it, that's just, that's what I live for. You know, yeah. I want that. Yeah, that's great. I mean, they, and you get it to, you get it to the entire tattoo to a level of finish instead of having to worry about, well, this area is six months old and this area is yeah. today. You know, you're not taking pictures and apologizing for your black, you know, it's just, there it is, you know, it's done. This is what happened. Yeah, you know? yeah. No, that, there's a lot to that. I, I absolutely agree. Well, you know, it's like the 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 mentality behind tra traditional tattooing. You know, the banger. You know, get it in, get it done, and you know, just do a fucking banger, but do it for six hours. You know. Right. Right. So you said you you struggle most with the color, mm -hmm. um, just getting solid color. Yeah, in. I've always been good at lining. Uh, it wasn't until I started using rotaries that I started to feel way more capable with color. Yeah. You know, just because like. You know, I, I understand a tattoo machine. I know how it works. But once a tattoo machine stops working the way I want it to, making it do it again is, you know, it's beyond me. I can't, you know. And with a rotary, there's none of that. You know, it either works or it doesn't. If it doesn't, throw it away and get a new one. So that's what I like. I'm, I'm the same way. I, I, I held out for the longest time um, because I, I like coil machines. Mm -hmm. I like to look at them. I like to have them. You know, there's the old joke, you know, what's the worst thing about tattooing with rotaries? Yeah, 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 right. Um, but I, I, yeah, I absolutely agree. Because what you always find yourself doing is, um, and I learned early on that you don't work to a tattoo machine. You learn enough about a tattoo machine to make it work the yeah. way that you want to work. But you don't do the tattoo mach machines are so coil machines are so finicky that they 
they change their mind 20 minutes into yeah. a piece. Skin and, to skin, you know. Yeah. Like, if, if you're working on different pieces, all because, you know, like, when 42 started out, I wasn't doing, like, appointments or anything. I was doing walk-ins. So, you know, like, moving from person to person, you know, and the skin changing every time, and, like, machines run different, you know, everything behaves differently. It's... It gets aggravating, whereas with the rotary machine, it does the same thing every time. Yeah. I feel like my I, – I, I worked hard on color early on, uh, and I, I feel like I had sol solid color early. Even whenever I was working against myself, I was kind of like David – he still does today. He uses nothing bigger than a seven bag, mm -hmm. and he'll fill a giant. Yeah. So, but I came from that. I came from that era where it was. I remember uh, when I was first starting out. Uh, Dylan Bird, you did the huge Ganesh on his oh, arm. Oh yeah. And the, the, like it was like that that kind of violet pink colors coming out from it. I just remember how vibrant that thing was. And what was that like? I don't know. Six, seven years ago, and it looks exactly the same. I promise. Well, I haven't seen yeah. it in years, it's but good. I'd love to see it again. <laughs> um, yeah, but I and I was doing all that stuff with the with the seven mag mm -hmm. and um, making that transition to rotaries and to big configurations. So yeah. I use big configurations all the time, and um, uh, it made my life so much easier. Well, see, like I've actually I've gone backwards. Like I started, I was, I was like smaller. rotaries and fifteens. Fuck you, you know. Uh -huh. And now, uh, now I use a seven mag. Like you? <laughs> you'd see this tattoo that's this big. It's been colored with a seven uh, mag. The what whole made thing. you go back to that? Uh I just I really like it. Like uh, I use the Neotat, the Vivace, you mm -hmm. know, and like the the way that machine runs, I can just lay it over and whip color in, and it just it works. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know? No, that's true. And you know, David will never change. Mm -hmm. He'll never he'll never move to a rotary for one thing, but he'll never um, he'll never change from a small mag. Mm -hmm. He just he's so comfortable with it. And I mean, it, it's impressive how much like how solid of a field of color he can lay with a seven mag is. But he's been doing it 22, 23 years, yeah, and he's never, and he's used that same setup the entire time. Um, I mean, it's like a, like Kevin and Shannon, you know, uh, they what they use rounds forever. They recently yeah. started using mags, I think. Yeah. And like their work was always good, but like now it's like, God damn it, you know, yeah. like you, it's, you weren't supposed to figure it out. Right. right. <laughs> that was their signature, though. You know, you could tell it. You know, that's how like, and they influenced a generation that came up kind of at the, uh, around the same time as me with Brian Jordan. Mm -hmm. And um, I've only ever seen uh, one tattoo that Brian Jordan did. It was this Ram's head. I saw it was at RP Tracks. Just some random dude had it, huh. but it was fucking beautiful. Beautiful, you yeah, know, and I, that's good. the only tattoo I'd ever seen him do, and it was uh, awesome. Well, Brian Jordan, another um, guy named Neil Stavely that moved away mm -hmm. from here for years and years ago, he tattooed with us, uh, and um, Eric Cooley. Cooley, yeah. yeah. All three of those guys have that same kind of real textural like style that mm -hmm. that Kevin developed using. I think Eric uh, didn't he didn't he uh, apprentice? All Ramsey three of those guys did. Oh, they all did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they don't they don't take apprentices anymore, right? Uh, that's uh, what I, don't think, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Like um, yeah, so all three of those guys came from that, and it's still visible in all of their tattoos today, as far oh, yeah. as I know. That comes right through. Like, uh, uh, like I said, I've only seen one piece by Brian Jordan, but Eric Cooley's work I've always enjoyed. I, I especially mm -hmm. like his painting, man. His painting's so fucking cool. And, yeah. uh, but I think... I think he started using some mags too. I'm not sure, but I think he has. Yeah. And like you start seeing it, like it's it's the same thing, but you know, it's just it's more fluid, and that's you know, it's just the next step of it. You know, in the evolution of it, it's cool. Yeah, it's nice to see. Yeah. Um, so what did you? Uh, so moving to the rotary helped you a lot with mm -hmm. the with the color. As far as translating, a, since you had already kind of developed a drawing style and found what you were into, translating it to something tattooable really wasn't very difficult because it was the imagery was already pretty. Yeah, it was, it was just in there, you know. Uh, start. Uh, you know, anytime I'm getting ready to do a tattoo, I've already drawn it four times. You know, I've, I've made a sketch, I've finalized the lines, I've made the actual line work, and then I've made the stencil, you know, it's ready to go. And... Uh, <clears throat> So you really, you prepare, you rarely, you ever draw on the skin at all? No, all the time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I think it's, I, I was always more comfortable with stencils. And if I'm doing, you know, something that's a one shot, I'm, I'm not like, you know, Dave Tev and all that can just marker something on and rock it and make it look amazing. You know, I have to, if I'm going to do something like that, I need, you know, more structure to come off of. But, uh, you know, I'm not afraid of drawing on skin. You know, it's, I do it from time to time when I feel like I can. Okay. Um, what else? What have I not asked? What about going forward? Are you you're happy at no regrets? You're going uh, yeah, to, um, uh, I'm planning on traveling. I saw you, yeah, I saw yeah. you put something up about traveling a little more. Yeah, uh, I I would like to do more conventions. I just I want to get out there and meet more people and just you know like 
there's only so much that you can take in from everything, you know, that's around you all the time, you know, and you just need that different input, you know, need different yeah. perspective and see how d other people work and things like that. Have you ever watched um, Jeff Gogway's video that he put out a year or so ago? Um, what's it called? It's called uh, Tattoo As I See It. No, never seen it. Uh, it's really good, but he talks about how he made the. Um, I'll, um, I'll let you borrow it. I actually have it. Okay. Uh, take it home tonight, tonight and watch it. It's really good. Um, he uh, he talks about how he made a decision early on, and he kind of went through the same thing. He drew fairly well. He was a terrible tattooer, and he didn't have a, a, an ideal apprenticeship and all that. But when he made the decision that he wanted to be, he's like, I'm just, I just want to be the best tattooer in the world. He's like, obviously I was too young and dumb to know that that doesn't exist, but yeah. that was my mindset. Well, he, Philip Blue's still alive. Yeah, it's true. Philip Blue's still alive. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. And he, um, uh, so when he went, when he made that decision, he was like, I need to be at every big convention. I need to enter every competition I can enter. Mm -hmm. I need to meet every badass artist I can meet. And I mean, you see where he is now. Yeah. And that was his, that was his MO. He was just like, I want to be right there. And I mean, a lot of these people that you see, um, that, you know, are, are wildly successful, you know, they're, they're doing great work, but they're also doing a lot of work getting out there and letting people see what they do. And, uh, you know, you're not going to be known if you don't, go know people you know, yeah that's all there is to it and you know just i, I want to get i've lived here my entire life you know and i want to see you know different yeah. see other, other things places. that's yeah. the best part about this job really yeah uh, you, you know go anywhere I've you got want. family so it's a little harder now but uh but this podcast has helped we travel a lot more with it so um so how do you i mean you're you're working in a style you're you're you, you're looking to get out there mm -hmm. to do guest spots to 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 push yourself um in uh, in a style that is pretty saturated mm -hmm. in the new school, how do you, where do you see your work going? How do you set yourself apart? Uh, well, uh, I actually, I recently had the opportunity to uh, paint at a gallery show at the Brooks. It's uh, the Art of Video Games thing. My friend, uh, he goes by Birdcap. Uh, his name's Michael Roy, but I, I call him Opie, and I always will. <laughs> yeah. um, <clears throat> Opie got this gig, and uh, he and uh, Nosy, uh, who's a local graffiti guy? He's yeah. really fucking good. Uh, they got a. Uh, they're doing. They did a mural uh, and as an addendum to uh, the uh, Smithsonian Art of Video Games exhibit that's currently at the Brooks. And uh, they asked me to, to paint an arcade cabinet. <clears throat> so I got the cabinet and took it down there in the room, in the gallery with them. And so while they were painting on the walls, I was working on my cabinet and working on the walls here and there. And uh, just like I said, it was the first thing I've ever painted, you know, and yeah. it ain't great, but I enjoy the experience. Yeah. And, so you think um, you'll explore that a little more? I think so. And I think like it's already happening to where just like working in that process, working, uh, you know, because, you know, with a tattoo, you, you work dark to light, mm -hmm. but you don't always have to. And that's one of the secrets that guys like Timmy B have understood is that you can work mids and then build your darks back into it and things like that. So working with paint has showed me how I can do that with tattoos. And that's the next step, you know. Yeah. That really is, in a nutshell, the focus of this entire show is is trying to um, get tattooers to explore other mediums, especially painting, and I really mm -hmm. think oil painting. And so we talk to a lot of. It's funny as long we do a tattoo show, and this is sixty some odd seven sixty something episodes in, and it is so much easier to find really really high level accomplished painters that want to hang out and talk than it is to find tattooers that want to hang out and really? talk. It's so weird. So, but it's been great because we I always because I have a ta tattoo mindset. Now I paint a lot, mm -hmm. but I, I was a tattooer before I was a painter, and um, I, I I find myself listening to what they have to say and thinking of how I can translate that into tattooing mm -hmm. all the time, which is why I've limited my palette so much. And, uh, yeah, I mean, and, oh, I'm sorry. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah. And just like you said, not uh, knowing the rules and then knowing why you're breaking them. Like you, like you said, we're always taught to work dark to light. Well, it's not always the case. As a matter of fact, almost every tattoo, it doesn't have to be the case. You can get a really nice effect if you put your mid tone in and then pepper your dark right over the top of it. You just milk yeah, it. Like, it you're always beautiful. getting told to like, don't don't cross pollinate, man. Don't saturate <laughs> yeah. your darks into your lights. Like, shut up. You know, that's totally a thing to do, and people have been doing it for thousands of years now. So shut up. Yeah. You know? We did go through um, a really long period of time that I feel like we're just coming out of that we had people that that dominated this industry that were not artists that were that were not true artists and that they didn't explore other mediums they just mm -hmm. did tattoos uh well at uh, least that ran the show at most of the shops that you went to on a day-to-day -day basis well the thing about it is like for so long tattooing wasn't considered an art form and the you know 
oil painting has been around for how long now? You know, as long as, as soon as we figured out we can mix poison and put it on paper, you know, right. we've done it. We got it. And uh, you know, like. The, you know, there's always names throughout history and movements that, you know, that stick in our minds collectively and things like that. Tattooing just got elevated, you know, to that level, you know, the, the, the very baby genesis of where oil painting started. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's the natural thing to want to explore that as far as you can and focus on that as much as you can. Because that's, that's the thing about uh, tattooing is that it has to be your entire lifestyle, you know, like by all means have, uh, have hobbies and and you know explore other things but when you have when you do a tattoo because of the permanence of it you have to focus on it and it becomes your entire life so i mean to you know there was just guys mixing the two of those but now like we have the onset of people that are you know are coming out of they they went and got art degrees so they can be better tattooers when they yeah. start you know and that's always awesome that to was see. such a huge yeah. transition exactly. I, that would have been unthinkable when i started tattooing. No, no way there's no way like you know back in the mid 90s late 90s that you, some guy with a scarf and some horn rim glasses <laughs> right. was gonna walk into a tattoo exactly. shop and get a job <laughs> you know the fact that i got a job is a goddamn miracle and i'm just whatever you know yeah. i'm still reeling from it today <laughs> uh where do people go if they want to find your work uh it's on Instagram uh, at Limited KP. Uh, I have a Facebook page where you can find out what my initials mean. Um, oh, ah, there you go. Okay. Uh, and uh, that's it. Okay. I don't, I don't. I don't. I try to focus on Instagram because it's the easiest way to reach. It the is most the people, easiest so. way. It's like the tattooers' um, yeah. portfolio of choice these uh, days. Oh, we have a. Uh, there's no regrets. Memphis. dot com. I think that's what right. it's called. Uh, I can't. I'm not sure. I bet if you Google No Regrets Memphis, It'll, there, that'll, that'll be, be a the website. first thing that comes up. Yeah. Um, well, cool. That was fun, man. We should do it again sometime. Absolutely. We'll, normally, we'll take on. Um, we get questions. Most of our viewers. Well, I shouldn't say most. The viewers we get questions from are generally newer tattooers, mm -hmm. and a lot of times it's our questions. More often than not, it's technical questions. So um, it'd be cool if you come back sometime and we tackle someone's questions. Okay. I mean, if people actually want to ask me stuff, I'll be glad to tell them. That. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. All right, sweet. Yeah.